May I have your attention, please? I would like to introduce to you all the new Michael Kelso! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 times Kelso was the best character on that 70s show. What's in the bag? The Packers winning next year's Super Bowl, that's what's in the bag. For this list, we'll be looking at the character's most memorable moments, both serious and comedic. Did we forget a noteworthy instance that warrants us wearing the stupid helmet? Let us know in the comments below. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. If it wasn't for that pesky Scooby-Doo. Several characters from the show have taken a tumble off the town's water tower. Kelso more than most. It is a dangerous spot. <laughs> However, when Hyde plummets and hurts his neck, Kelso is absent. While visiting Hyde in the hospital, Kelso's disappointed he didn't get to see it happen. He tells Hyde and Donna that he chose to watch Scooby-Doo instead in hopes that the characters would find a real ghost for once. But it wasn't. It was just another crazy old guy. <laughs> One of the best things about Kelso is how childlike he can be. And we've all been there watching Scooby-Doo and the gang. Well, at least until more recent versions of the cartoon. The end won't be pretty, but the ride down is super fun. <laughs> Number 9. Kelso's Vase Stash a guy's trip to Jackie's cabin gets complicated when she arrives to clean it out with the help of Red and Kitty. Kelso hides his stash in a nearby vase, which naturally gets stuck on his hand. Get off of me! <laughs> Welcome to the cabin! <laughs> what are you doing here? Yes! As funny as his antics are with it on, Things get even funnier when he finally breaks free. Red spots the bag and demands an explanation, so Kelso tells him it's paprika. Honey, honey, paprika is red. <laughs> if you mean green paprika, yes, sir. His repeated and moronic attempts to pass it off as cooking ingredients are hilarious, as are his efforts to throw Hyde and Fez under the bus. Eventually, Red's threat of getting rid of it and Kelso's own stupidity reveal the truth. Well, I don't care whose it is, I'm throwing it in the lake. Well, I paid 20 bucks for that. <laughs> you got my parents' number. Number eight. The short leash. After Jackie breaks up with him, Kelso's in a bad place. He even cries in the circle. Eventually, he decides to write her a song. However, his songwriting talents would be better put somewhere else. Eric is especially disparaging of it. What do you think? <clears throat> well, I think that you should draw her a picture. <laughs> During one of Kelso's songwriting sessions, Eric vents about his own problems with Donna, telling the guys that he doesn't want to be controlled by her. Kelso prefers being on the short leash, even expressing his desire to return to it through song. Put the short leash back on me! Eric promptly breaks the guitar, which Kelso thinks is funny because it belonged to Eric. It's three great comedic moments, one after the other. Burn, indeed. <laughs> Number 7. Crap Shoes When the guys decide to go to Canada so they can buy beer, secrecy is paramount so Red doesn't find out. Naturally, Kelso arrives with all his usual delicacy. All right! Canada! Woohoo! Beer! The rest of them immediately shoot him down as he has screwed up risky plans in the past. Eric cites the time they were going to leave a bag of dog poop on the principal's doorstep, only for Michael to panic after igniting it in the car and stomping all over it. Eric, it was on fire! <laughs> okay, you're not going. It's a hysterical scene that features Kelso at his loud, dumb best. The kicker is Leo showing up out of nowhere and asking why they're bringing crap shoes along. The bag was on fire! <laughs> 
Number six, the jacket. A well-intentioned gift from Jackie sees Kelso try out a new look, a leather jacket. Although he believes that it makes him look like Marlon Brando, everyone else has a different pop culture figure in mind. E <laughs> Jackie, did you dress me up like the fonts? The guys relentlessly mock him for it, leading to a lot of great comedy throughout the episode. I can't believe you guys. Here I am, as Brando as can be, and you guys can't even see that. Well, you can both just sit on it. <laughs> Even a pizza bribe doesn't satisfy their need to mock their friend. So now, uh, where was I when Fonzie here moved to town? <laughs> hey! Get that back a mundo! However, when even Laurie laughs at him, Kelso decides to ditch the garment, threatening to kick some ass over all the jokes. Hyde's much more well-received donning of the jacket prompts a fight between the two, but Kelso gets the worst of it. That's... No, give it to me. Give me back my jacket. <laughs> The Fonz jacket isn't around for long, but it delivers a lot of laughs. Number 5. Prank Day Kelso isn't the brightest bulb in the drawer, if you catch our drift, but even he can be smart if properly motivated. Yeah, I'm an evil mastermind. When Hyde, Fez and Eric arrive in the basement, Kelso presents them with gifts for the supposed gift day holiday. Instead, all of their presents have gross or unpleasant consequences, prompting Kelso to reveal that it's actually prank day. That's right, it's prank day! Gift day, you idiots. <laughs> While he seems to back down after some peanut butter-related retaliation, Kelso follows up with some super glue pranks. His childlike glee at his friends being stuck to things is infectious. Is there a cushion glued to my butt? <laughs> No, not glued. Super glued. <laughs> You're a dead man. Huh? What are you gonna do? Sit on me with your cushion butt? <laughs> Number four. He can't control the weather. This is about a romantic double date. It's you and Donna and me and Jackie. Kelso! You do know you're not actually dating Jackie, right? Yeah, that's why it's a secret double date. <laughs> Kelso and Jackie's relationship has had its fair share of breakups. More on that soon. But during one of their breaks, Kelso comes up with a scheme to win Jackie back while taking a trip to an ice shack. He plans to imitate Eric and Donna's relationship to cozy back into Jackie's good graces. You guys are like the perfect couple. And, and if you're there, then I can just copy all the sissy loser things that Eric does for you. The couple tosses Kelso an underhand, easy way to impress her, by Eric lending Donna his jacket, but Kelso whiffs it big time. I'm cold too. Well, damn, Jackie, I can't control the weather. <laughs> and even if Fez didn't lend Jackie his coat, she could keep herself warm with that red hot burn. Number three, breaking up with Jackie. Kelso is usually in the wrong when it comes to his relationship with Jackie, given his numerous infidelities. Remember the first time I kissed Pam Macy? Yeah, in the gym. And in the gym and in her car. <laughs> but anyway. However, in this case, we're on his side. When the two of them argue about their reasons for cheating, Michael relates that he was motivated to cheat after Jackie disparaged his abilities to provide for her. I didn't have any money to buy you tater tots. And you said that I'd never be able to support you because I wasn't smart enough. Kelso goes on to lament that she frequently makes him feel bad about himself and that they're not right for each other because of it. It's a rare moment of openness and maturity from Kelso, and we have to give him props for getting out of a toxic relationship. I want to break up. Wait, break up? No, 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 Michael, I was wrong. Please, let's talk about this. No. Number two, burn. Everyone on that 70s show appreciates a good burn or insult or prank, and no one's as vocal in their appreciation as Kelso. That was a wicked burn. <laughs> oh. I mean, it had all the elements. You didn't see it coming. Parts of it really hurt. Whenever he or someone else delivers a particularly good one, he'll often yell, <laughs> These exclamations act as either the punchline or add extra spice to some already funny moments. It's impossible to choose just one burn among the many. Although the time that Kelso says it to everyone for not believing that he slept with a hot librarian is certainly up there. Excuse me. Burn! 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 All 
these buns simply wouldn't be as fire as they are without Kelso. You have the right to remain burned! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lying to Red When Donna, Eric and Kelso set out to steal a street sign for Hyde's birthday, it's up to Kelso to take a saw from Red's tools to get the job done. Okay, but you gotta be really quiet. Come on, it's me we're talking about, I'm like a cat. <laughs> Naturally, Red catches him. While thinking isn't his strong suit, Kelso still manages to come up with a plausible, if ridiculous lie, for him, that he needs to cut down a tree to rescue a rabbit. There's a rabbit stuck in a tree, and I want to return that rabbit to the wild so it can lay its eggs. While Donna and Eric take the saw from behind Red's back, Kelso throws Eric under the bus, claiming he put the rabbit there. Eric threw a rabbit up a tree? Yeah. Hey, he's a sadistic bastard. Everything about this scene, from his halting, obvious lie to his wicked burn on Eric, is absolute peak Kelso. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. No better than the lady.